Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ray Marquina, aka the official Arcaneer. If you're working with Microsoft Fabric and want to streamline some of those steps in your DevOps process when pushing code into your development environment, this video is for you. Today I'm sharing a solution designed to enhance your workflow and make your deployment smoother in Microsoft Fabric. If I navigate over to my screen to my collaboration workspace, this is what I'm talking about. After I've submitted a PR within DevOps and I've complete the pull request, I still have to come back here within Fabric and hit this update all button. Today, we're going to get rid of that step altogether. So in order to build the solution, we need to create a few items. The first thing that we're going to create is a workspace. And this workspace is going to be untethered from source control. The reason being is because source control isn't going to allow some of these items to be Git supported. So it's just going to simplify the process overall. We're going to create a notebook within this workspace and we're going to create a pipeline. The notebook will be responsible for hitting a few endpoints within the Fabric REST API. And the pipeline is going to be event driven that's going to be triggered by a file landing into blob storage. We're also going to create a DevOps YAML pipeline. This is going to be responsible for adding that file into blob storage, triggering the overall mechanism to work once a pull request is merged. As I walk through this solution, I'd like you to keep a few things in mind. First off, this solution does come with a good amount of overhead. I mean, we're using blob storage, we're using event streams, we're using activator. We are certainly bringing in a lot of technology just to call a few API endpoints. But the reason we have to do this is because Fabric's API today is a bit limited in the way that we can authenticate. I mean, right now there's no support for managed identity or SPN for us to execute those endpoints, which leaves us with the user identity being the primary source of authentication. And even if you find yourself creating a service account where you remove the MFA uh, piece for authentication, you still are going to find yourself battling with the different off flows to authenticate within your YAML pipeline. So I found this to be the simplest solution. And my hope is that once Fabric matures, we'll be able to simplify our solution and remove some of these components that I've added here today. All right, so we're going to start with the clean collaboration workspace, or think of this as my development environment. I'm not going to have anything in it. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a brand new workspace. So as I mentioned, let's create a DevOps workspace. Uh, let's say DevOps operations workspace. Let's go ahead and click apply. And let's add the items that I mentioned. We're going to need to add a notebook first. And let's go ahead and give it a meaningful name. We can say DevOps sync. And I like to prefix everything with notebook, uh, maybe lowercase. There we go. And I've already written the code, so I'm going to go paste it in and then we can walk it through or talk it through a bit. So here's the code. I want us to reference the Microsoft Fabric API so we can take a look at where we could potentially find where these endpoints live or where these API calls live. So if I go to Fabric REST API under core and under Git, here are going to be the list of um, API calls that you can perform. The two that we're targeting are going to be the get status and the update from Git. So starting with get status, uh, this is going to allow you to return a status of the items in a workspace that can be committed to Git. And this is going to be important because this information is what we're going to need to pass in to our update from Git API call. So this is going to be using a Git method, a Git method, I should say. And we're just going to need to pass in the workspace ID. And if you look at the sample response that you get back, once you call this, you're going to get the two, two pieces of information we need. We need the workspace head and the remote commit hash. This is the information that we are going to extract and use it to pass into our update from Git API call. 
And this is going to um, be the, the next call that we perform. You're going to see that this is a post and here's the URL. Again, it only takes a workspace ID, but the difference here is this is going to take a request body and you're going to see that the remote commit hash is required in order for you to call this, uh, call this API. And if you look at the sample requests, you're going to see that they are performing a post, they're passing in the workspace ID, and they are passing in those two bits of information, the workspace head and the remote commit hash. So now going back to the functions that were created, you're going to see that um, the first function is going to be called get workspace get status. So I am passing in the workspace ID of my development environment. Uh, and the way that I authenticate is using the MS Sparks utils credentials. And you can pass in the uh, they, uh, the authority of PBI, uh, and that's going to give you your bearer token to authenticate to actually call these endpoint or call these APIs. Um, I'm establishing my URL here, and here's where I'm actually um, uh, sending the the GET uh, request. So you can see I'm passing in the URL and passing in my my headers for uh, authentication, and really. What is the what is probably the purpose of this API is this going to be this return or this function, I should say, is this return. I want to return the workspace head and the remote commit hash. So this return value is going to be probably the most important thing here. So for my next function, this update workspace to get, I'm doing a little bit more of the same, but I am calling the previous function of get workspace status and i'm passing it into this variable here and then in my request body i am calling those attributes from this variable to pass into the workspace head and the remote commit hash so this is how i'm constructing my request body again i am um, constructing the url with the workspace id parameter and here's where i am now sending over that request as a post and passing in the relevant parameters here you can see with this parameter I am passing in my request body and expecting hopefully a 202 to say that we were able to update and hit that update all button in our, um, in our response. And the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to call this function. Very simple. Again, this code isn't anything that's production ready. It's just for the demo. So again, please use um, with that information. All right, so that's going to be our notebook. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go back to our workspace and we're going to need to create a pipeline. So let's create a data pipeline. Let's call it pipeline DevOps. And let's go ahead and create. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to call that notebook that we just created. So if we go to activities, we go to notebook, we can give it a meaningful name. We can say execute. DevOps notebook, and then we'll navigate into the settings. You can see that it's going to require a workspace. So the workspace is going to be the workspace that we created where this notebook lives and the notebook itself. So DevOps sync, and that's it. So those are the only two. This is the only thing that we need to set. If we go back to home, now what we're going to do is we're going to add a event driven trigger here. So to do that, there's a couple steps we need to follow. The first thing is we're going to navigate into source and we are going to select uh, the blob storage account that I mentioned we needed in order to land a file into. Uh, I've already created my connection, so I don't have to go uh, run through that. But again, that's very straightforward. You would just go to settings, um, you would go to connections and you would establish your um, ADLS Gen Storage 2 connection. But here I'm just going to select my subscription and my storage account name. This is going to be Pro Demo ADLS. Scroll down a little bit and then you can click Next. And here's where you can select the event types that you want to configure. So if you're only interested in, let's say, files that have been deleted or files that have been renamed, you can select those explicitly. Uh, by default, everything is selected. For my case, what I want to do is I want to um, just focus on files that have been created. So I'm going to just select that one. And then I can filter this down even further. So you have a list of fields and operators that you can select. Um, for fields, if you select subject, this is going to contain the 
path, the ADLS path, as well as the file name. So I'm going to say for a string that contains DevOps within either my path or my file name. In this particular case, it's going to be the file name, and I know that I'm going to name the file DevOps. So I'm just going to say that in my subject, this is what my filter should um, exclusively listen for. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And if you scroll down just a little bit, you can connect. And now you can see the statuses of each task. So um, creating the system events, it's going to create the event stream, and then it's going to link to blob storage. Let me go ahead and save. So now that our pattern has been set and our event stream is created, the next thing we need to do is set our alerts or really set our activator. And all we need to do is click on create new item. It'll give it a default name. Let's say my DevOps activator. And we can go ahead and create. Now the activator is what's going to be listening for that pattern or that filter that we just established and then trigger the pipeline. So both of those steps are necessary. So while that's getting created, let's navigate over back into DevOps. And I'm going to go into my repos to show you that we have a repo called Fabric Analytics. This is tied to a main branch and this main branch does have a policy on it, meaning I can't uh, and the policy is that I can't just directly add into main branch. I have to do everything by way of a PR. Um, so I wanted to show you that we're in main. Where we're going to navigate now to is pipelines, and we're going to create a brand new YAML pipeline. So let's go ahead and create a pipeline. We're going to say, where does our code live? This is going to be in an Azure repo. We're going to select the repository, which is called Fabric Analytics. And then we're going to select starter pipeline. So I've already written the code. I'm going to paste it in here, and now we can talk through it. Uh, so again, this is going to get triggered anytime there is a change to main. So anytime a PR happens, this is going to trigger this event. Um, the other thing is, is this is using an Ubuntu VM image for our pool. I have some variables that capture my account name, my account key, my container name, and my file name. Um, and I would highly recommend you go into libraries, create like a variable group and use the uh, account key here. Again, this is just for uh, demo purposes. Again, not production ready code. And then the steps, right? So step one, we're going to install the Azure CLI. Then we're going to contain an empty file named DevOps in our, um, in our DevOps container. So here's that container name. Uh, then we're going to authenticate using that account key that I just referenced in our variables. We'll do a little bit of checking to see if the container name exists and if it doesn't say that it doesn't. Uh, but the last step here is probably the most important. Here's where we're going to upload that file into the Azure storage container. Now, again, this is an empty file for demo purposes, but if you wanted to maybe add like a timestamp to this file and um, land it into uh, the storage account, maybe for some logging or some analytics that you want to perform, right? You could certainly do that as well. The last thing that I want to specify is this overwrite command. Make sure that you're overwriting the file because every time you run it without this uh, overwrite enabled, it will fail the, the mechanism. So you want to ensure that you are able to overwrite these files. All right, I'm going to go ahead and save and I'm going to create a new branch for this commit. As I mentioned, I can't directly add anything to main here. So let's go to repos. Let's go to pull request. And let me um, approve and complete the request. And I can go ahead and delete that feature branch. I don't feel like I'm going to need it again. OK, so now that the request has been completed, we're going to be able to see that here is the pipeline. Uh, here itself, and you can see that no runs have happened as of yet. I'm going to go back to DevOps and see how my alert is. And here you can see my alert has been created, my DevOps activator. So I can now go ahead and exit out of that window and save the pipeline. All right, I feel like we're getting close and everything is uh, coming together um, for this execution. So the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to now create a pull request to test this overall mechanism. So let's go to our 
collaboration workspace or our dev environment, if you will. Again, it's empty. And what I want to do is I want to branch off of this workspace to, to start some development. So if you click source control, you're going to notice that there are two buttons here. They're hard to see. And if you look at my last video, I didn't mention this, uh, but I figured this is a good time to mention it now, is if you need to create a feature workspace and a uh, feature branch quickly, you can just click this little uh, Git icon, select branch out to new workspace. And rather than creating the workspace and uh, configuring all the Git properties, you can just um, do it within a click of a button with the values that it's looking for. So just enter your branch name, we can say branch one, and the workspace name, we can say developer one. And it's going to create the workspace and configure all those Git settings for you with just a click of a button. So it makes the, the process a little bit more efficient. So here's my developer one workspace. And to test the process, what we're going to do is we're going to create a test notebook. So let's call this uh, test DevOps. And we can go back to our workspace. And we can commit this change. So now it's committed. And we can go to our branch and create a PR. So let's create that pull request. Again, this is going to main. So this is now going to trigger our pipeline to run. So let me go ahead and click approve and complete. I'm going to keep the feature branch. And if we go back to our developing or developer workspace, you're going to see that in source control, it is now recognized that there is a change and that it wants to add this item. Again, the objective of, of this video is to remove the need for me to come in here and click the update all button. So I'm not going to touch that, but I'm going to navigate back to DevOps. We'll go to the pipeline and you'll see that my pipeline is indeed running. So if we go to jobs, we'll see what step it's at. Uh, we can see that it's installing the Azure CLI and now it's doing some authentication. If I go to my pipeline or to my um, ADLS Gen 2 account and we go to the DevOps container, you'll see that we just added that file just now. So it's 913 and you can see at 913 that this file has been added. So if we go back to Fabric and we go to Monitor, what we should also now see is our pipeline starting to execute. So here you can see the pipeline has been kicked off alongside with that notebook. So again, if we go to the Fabric Dev workspace, the intention should be here in just a moment that I won't have to click this update all. It's just going to land automatically. And you can see that it just did that as I was talking. So you can see without me having to click update all that the um, that the process itself, those endpoints within the notebook are doing that on our behalf. And that's going to wrap up this video. I hope this video gave you a clear understanding of how to streamline your DevOps process within Microsoft Fabric, from setting up a workspace and creating an event-driven pipeline to integrating with Azure DevOps. This is going to be a solution that is going to enable you to tackle some of those current limitations that we're facing within Fabric, such as the API dependency on user identity, and going to help you achieve some of those automated steps within DevOps that require manual intervention today. Remember, some of these features are still in preview, so it's not quite ready for production, but perfect for experimenting and improving your workflows. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any future content. Also, I'd love to hear from you. What challenges are you facing with CI CD workflows with Microsoft Fabric? Drop a comment below and let's start a conversation. Thank you for watching and we're going to see you in the next one.